was looking for something in the public domain that I could adapt into a musical uh, that would use all of my skills and give me a bit of a challenge. And I found this old novel, A Voyage to Arcturus, published in 1920, which is now in public domain as of a couple of years ago. And I thought, great, it's sci-fi, it's philosophy, it's, there's, it, it's easily adaptable, uh, there's even musical elements kind of in the story. It's a science fiction. Most science fiction musicals are spoofs or satires. Uh, Rocky Horror Show, Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors I love, but it's basically a send-up of old 50s movies. Uh, most science fiction aren't, musicals aren't serious science fiction. You know, there's a couple of exceptions like Metropolis, but you know, they're very rare, they're spoofs. And those that are science fiction take place on Earth. None of them are on alien planets. So this is different for that reason alone. It's science fiction or fantasy, takes place on an alien planet, and it's serious. It actually is a drama, more than anything else. Uh, the music is varied, it's all different styles. Uh, it gets very philosophical. That's one of the things that attracted me to the book. It actually gets deeply philosophical. Uh, and there's deaths and there's tragedies and there's murders and there's love and blood, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but you can't, it, this is not Les Miserables, you know, it's not that kind of drama. There has to be comedy throughout this, there has to be a lighter moment all the way through this. And that comes from Maskell, the fish out of water story basically, of Maskell on an alien planet, the only earthling amongst all these people. Um, I've read bits and pieces of the dialogue and I've, I've looked at um... I've looked at the synopsis online and stuff like that, and it seemed like so different and so like interesting and like just the pitch. I was like, I have to see what this is about. It's about a young man trying to find the meaning of life um, through travel and experience and meeting a bunch of different, unique, interesting people along the way. Yeah, in space. It took me about 18 months to write the whole thing. It took about. 10 months to write the book and the lyrics and then another 10 months or thereabouts to write the music for it. Uh, and I finished that over a year ago now. Um, since then I thought, okay, well this is the one I'm going to try and produce. I've written three other musicals before this. Like the first one, don't worry about, no one's ever going to see that. Uh, the other two may get done one day. But I wanted to basically stage a workshop of some kind and film that workshop. I, I thought, I'm not going to put on a big full-on production to do this properly can get really, really expensive. To do it really well is expensive. I'm calling it a proof of concept production. Uh, and that means no live band. It's all really good solid backing tracks and we'll just work with playback, which sometimes has to be in sync with the visuals anyway. And that makes that technically easier. Uh, the actors will be singing live. So the performances will definitely be live. The way I want to stage it is with a backdrop and projection and I, I spent a lot of time, and I'm still going, creating those projections that will become the backgrounds of each of the worlds that he visits, each of the, the regions on this planet that he visits. Uh, so all these animations and things, that, and I'm, that's still ongoing, that's a big job. One of the reasons I wanted to do this, well, one of the reasons I'm staging it the way I am rather, is I'm trying to use all of my skill sets as much as possible. And one of my backgrounds, of course, is in film production and, and direction. And I do have a skill with editing and, uh, to a certain extent, visual effects, and mainly compositing. Uh, so all the backgrounds I'm creating, and I've done the research and I've looked into projection mapping, which is used a lot in theatre these days. What I'm doing with this is relatively simple compared to some other things. Uh, we're just going to have like a, a curtain, or strips of curtains that will be a screen, but which actors can walk through in and out of. Uh, but meanwhile, we're, and it'll be a scrim, so we can project onto that and then with lighting behind, we can reveal some scenes behind it on occasion. And I'll just create, because one of the challenges of this is he travels from different regions and they all have a very different look, very different feel, and that design is a key part of the show. And to do that physically is massive. You know, where you've got moving sets and whole things changing, so the well, projection's gonna have to be the solution here. It's something I can do myself, it's something that will save me money in the long run. The biggest challenge, frankly, is this is a brand new show. No one knows the music. No one really knows who I am. No one will know the cast. There's no big stars going to be in the cast. So the big challenge is making people want to come and see this unknown thing. 
So the more that they can see who's in it, see how good they are, hear some of the music, and get enthused by that, hopefully we'll, we'll sell a few tickets. Once the show goes on, we're gonna film a couple of performances and I'm gonna to cut together like the ideal showcase. And that video is a way of presenting the show to potential producers overseas, mainly thinking West End and Broadway or America generally. Using video in this way I, hasn't been done before. There are shows that, uh, a, a very recent example is uh, Be More Chill, which has just recently opened on Broadway. And they did a couple of productions and had a showcast album. And like two years after, that showcast album became a, a viral hit on YouTube and through Spotify. And because the fans loved the show so much, loved the music so much, that basically forced some Broadway people to say, we should look seriously, and now it's running on Broadway because there was this swell of viral fan support uh, based on the showcast album. I'm trying to do the same kind of thing with a video. Trying to work out who the demographic is for this, who the potential audience is for this show. Uh, and I know most producers say, well, you need to know exactly, don't just say everybody because that means nobody in particular. You need to know who your demographic is. So uh, some of the music is classic rock, like 70s style and the fact that it's science fiction might help with that. So I'm thinking it's more of a younger demographic, 15 to 30, 35. But that said, I mean, the themes that this touches on, the philosophical nature of it, that could appeal to a much older audience as well. There's, it's not a, a silly, light musical. You know, there's nothing wrong with those. They're great, fun shows. But this is not just a fun show. There's, it makes you think, hopefully. And I think that'll have a greater appeal to a lot, an older demographic as well. So I honestly don't know. I'm going to find out who buys the tickets and we'll see who comes or who, who watches the clips on, on YouTube. <laughs> but we're going to film it so that we can take it and pitch it overseas. You know, so the idea is that this show, this is just the beginning yeah. of the journey for the show, hopefully. My, my main mission with this, to be frank, is to have people walking out of the show at the end less afraid of death. So if people, and they can ask whatever questions they want, but if they walk out less afraid of death, whatever their belief system is, whatever they have in their life, whatever their situation is, that's the main goal of this, basically.